Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 13 februari 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today our bulletin is largely in English, but first some short info in Dutch. Vanmiddag is het interferentieprobleem in de ontvangen van Eindhoven van PI2 NOS ook gefixt door er een filter te plaatsen. Ja, die jongens die zitten niet stil. Ik weet niet helemaal zeker of ik het goed begrepen heb, maar als ik het wel heb is er ook in Breda een soortgelijk filter geplaatst. Afhankelijk van beschikbare tijd hebben we vandaag ook data en SSTV. Dat kan eventueel komen te vervallen uit tijdgebrek. We will now continue in English. Another great icon of AM radio nostalgia went down last week as three 300 feet towers of the famous Radio Luxembourg location Marnock were blown up. Before Dutch offshore Veronica commenced broadcasting early 60s, Radio Luxembourg was the only station on medium wave band that broadcasted pop music. Radio Luxembourg, nowadays known as RTL, was also the first commercial radio station on European soil. The station was launched March 15, 1933. Luxembourg has several other broadcast locations, for instance Junglister on Longwave and Shortwave, Dudelingen and Hosingen on FM and TV and multimedia platforms. Right now we will start with the propagation bulletin. Now the radio propagation report compiled by G0, KYA, G4BAO and G3YLA on Friday the 12th of February. The past week saw an increase in the solar flux index helped along by a gaggle of sunspots. The SFI hovered around 117 midweek, which when coupled with relatively settled geomagnetic conditions brought some life to the upper HF bands. Andy, Mike Zero, November, Kilowatt Romeo reported working Japan on 20 metres from his car at lunchtime using a monoband whip and 150 watts. Australia has also put in an appearance on 10 metres at times. Next week, NOAA predicts the solar flux index will be around 110 to 115 with generally settled geomagnetic conditions. There is the chance of unsettled conditions later in the week with the K-index predicted to hit 4 on Thursday or possibly Friday. This is due to a high-speed solar wind stream from a recurring coronal hole, so the message is get your DXing efforts in earlier in the week. The critical frequency as measured by the Chiltern Ionosonde was 8.6 MHz at noon on Wednesday the 10th and this translates to an estimated maximum usable frequency of 31 MHz over a 3000 km path and explains why DX was to be found on 10 meters. It may be worthwhile keeping an eye on 28 MHz this week to see if the good conditions continue. And now the VHF and up propagation news. It's been a poor winter overall for Tropo and there are few glimmers of hope in the coming week. After we have shunted the cold wintry weather into the continent, indications are that it will be Monday when a ridge of high pressure moves into Ireland and Western Britain. This will migrate eastwards across the country, being replaced by low pressure again from Thursday onwards. This means we may have a midweek opportunity to get some marginal tropospheric enhancement on the VHF and UHF bands before it fades away again. This is not a particularly strong ridge and is unlikely to bring widespread good conditions. The best tropo prospects are reserved for the eastern Mediterranean around Cyprus and Crete and also from Portugal to the Azores and Canaries. There's still no respite from the annual dip in meteor rates so early morning continues to be the best time of day for random meteor scatter operation. The moon declination increases all next week reaching maximum on Thursday so long moon windows with associated low losses mean it's a good week for earth moon earth operation. If you aren't equipped for EME or Oscar Zero as the moon is sometimes called artificial satellite DX is always available. Maybe take this slow week as an excuse to try satellite operation. And that's all for this week from the Propagation Team. Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 1998 with a release date of Friday, February 12th, 2016. Now, here is Skeeter Nash, N5ASH. This week's newscast opens with yet another reminder of the life-saving work that radio amateurs can do by stepping in to assist in natural disasters. We hear from Amateur Radio Newsline's Graham Kemp on the latest following the deadly earthquake in Taiwan. Sitting on what is known as the Pacific Rim of Fire, another earthquake, this with a magnitude of 6.4, has rocked the island of Taiwan, Saturday, Feb 6. It set off the collapse of several buildings, and a signal went out from the Chinese Taipei Amateur Radio League asking that several voice frequencies be kept clear. The Hong Kong Amateur Radio Transmitting Society reported that they heard it as a weak transmission, but it was nonetheless heard. 
Locally, hams were responding to the arduous rescue that would follow amid the rubble in the southwest coastal city of Tainan. Frequencies in Taiwan were to be kept clear on 7.060 with backup of 7.050 and on 80 metres 3.560 MHz. Short range frequencies were being used as well on VHF and UHF. And then came the aftershocks and tremors were felt even in the capital city of Taipei on the other side of the island from the stricken city. Ultimately, more than 350 people were rescued in the aftermath, but more than 500 were reported injured, according to the state-owned central news agency in Taiwan. Numerous individuals remained trapped inside buildings and rescuers searched for them in the ruins, often by hand. The death toll by midweek had risen to nearly 20, and the developers of one residential building in the city were facing charges of professional negligence for alleged shoddy construction. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Graham Kemp, VK4BB, on the east coast of Australia, part of the Pacific Rim of Fire. Because emergency preparedness is vital every place disaster strikes, the ARRL and the American Red Cross have a working relationship here in the U.S. It's a relationship they recently reaffirmed, as Amateur Radio Newsline's Jim Dameron, N8TMW, reports. The ARRL and the American Red Cross have signed a new memorandum of understanding that spells out their relationship when disaster strikes and when radio operators are called up for emergency response. The document succeeds the agreement the two organizations signed in 2010 and renews their cooperative relationship. According to the memorandum, ARIES personnel are to be deployed in keeping with a pre-arranged plan in order to keep communications open during emergencies. The document also encourages both organizations to communicate with state and local agencies and to share information regarding disasters and disaster operations. The ARRL commits to a role encouraging ARIES units to work with Red Cross chapters to create plans for disaster relief and emergency response. And likewise, the Red Cross field units are being encouraged to communicate in planning with ARRL's field units. The new document also makes it clear that for ARIES volunteers to assist the Red Cross, they do not need to undergo a prior background check even if they are not registered Red Cross volunteers. However, hands who are registered Red Cross volunteers must abide by the background check. The document was signed on January 22nd and is in place for another five years. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jim Dameron, N8TMW in Charleston, West Virginia. Washington State Amateur Clark Johnson, K7LRK, plans to be at the Casa Grande Ruins National Monument on Wednesday, February 17th. In fact, you'll find him in the Parkland's picnic area. But you will also find him on the amateur bands running 10 watts out of an 18-ounce portable rig. Because Johnson isn't there for a picnic, he's there to activate the site as part of the ARRL's year-long National Parks on the Air event. There's one other way to communicate with Johnson, however. Non-hams and hopeful hams can observe him and learn more about amateur radio. He will be there with the Center for Amateur Radio Learning and the Arizona Science Center, and they'll be doing public education and outreach during the event from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., local time. Come to think of it, that might just make for a nice picnic after all. It's not too early to think marathon. Okay, so the Boston Marathon is still several months away, but marathon preparation is going on now, and hams in the Boston area are needed to help with communication for a runner's event, a 13.1 mile race called the Marathon Park Prep. It will be held on Saturday, March 19th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The race follows a figure-eight course through the town of Ashland, Massachusetts, about 25 miles west of Boston. Runners consider it good training for the big event in the fall. For more information, email davidwolf, kg1h, at dkwolf at comcast.net. And there is an E at the end of wolf. The weekend of February 27th and 28th has been renamed the Carolina Weekend, with the North and the South getting into the act. The South Carolina QSO Party kicks off on Saturday, February 27th, followed by the North Carolina QSO Party the next day. The North Carolina Party will feature a new bonus station, W1VOA, the Voice of America, as well as two new bonus counties, Swain and Warren. There's a free barbecue dinner riding on it as well, with log entries to be put in a random drawing for a dinner featuring the 
famous flavors of both states. Let's get this party started. In fact, let's get both of them started. In one Indiana community, a hospital isn't just helping people respond with an ambulance. Now they'll have radios. Amateur Radio News Line's Paul Brown, WD9GCO, explains. The newest operating room inside St. Vincent Clay Hospital in Brazil, Indiana, will only be used for emergency operations, but no one will need to scrub up before stepping inside. The operating equipment here will consist of two-way radios and other components. The operations will be conducted by the hams who belong to the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service. The hospital-based radio center is being underwritten by a grant of nearly $2,000 from the Indiana Department of Homeland Security. Clay County's Emergency Management Director, Brian Husband, applied for the grant with the support of the Clay County Commissioners. The volunteers are to provide assistance during natural disasters and extreme weather events. Husband was quoted in a recent article in the Brazil Times as saying that the Radio Shack would be able to communicate during the emergencies with other radio operators outside the county, all on behalf of the Emergency Management Office. Seems it is just what the doctor ordered after all. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Paul Brown, WD9GCO in Valparaiso, Indiana. Punxsutawney Phil will never be a ham radio operator. He's a groundhog after all. But then... He doesn't need a license. He has a devoted group of local hams who go on the air for him. Here's that story from Amateur Radio Newsline's Heather MB, KB3TZD. While a certain famous groundhog may have put Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania on the map, it took a special event station to put Punxsutawney on the air. While weather watchers everywhere sat tight for the arrival of Tuesday, February 2nd, when the legendary rodent emerged from his burrow, Hams got a jump on things a few days earlier, with Cuso celebrating the time-honored tradition that takes place at Gobbler's Knob. On Saturday, January 30th, six members of the Punxsutawney Area Amateur Radio Club and three of their guests went deep into their own borough, in this case the radio shack at the Punxsutawney Airport. But the hams there did anything but hibernate. The operators of K3HWJ worked busy conditions on three bands, 20, 40, and 2 meters. Club president Steve Waltman, KB3FPN, told Amateur Radio Newsline that although lots of activity on the bands made for challenging contacts this year, there were about 100 QSOs by day's end, a respectable number. Waltman said this is a long-standing annual tradition for the club, though clearly the annual gig by Punxsutawney Phil predates this one by a couple of decades, and predates the age of radio itself by two years. Still, as even the groundhog would tell you, assuming you even asked, there's nothing wrong with working in the shadow of a celebrity, especially a weathercaster like Punxsutawney Phil. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Heather Emby, KB3TZD in Berwick, Pennsylvania.